Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome back to IMDb at San Diego Comic Con 2019. And look, it's the kids from Undone. Give it up for them, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, thank you. Um, you see me look down because I was like, who am I talking to? But once I saw the name, I remember exactly who I was talking to. Um, every once in a while you see something in this business, you know, because I'm a fan first more than a creator. And you, you see a lot of things and you get excited for them and stuff. Then you see something you get excited for, and at the same time, it makes you depressed because you're like, I'll never make anything this beautiful. Yeah. And that was the trailer for Undone. Not only does it look stunning, but it sounds like next level thinking. It sounds like something that I'm gonna have to have my wife explain to me while watching. <laughs> Tell us what it's about. Um, well, it's about the state of reality and how we perceive it. Right there, like, you lost me. Like, <laughs> holy shit. Like, what happened to the Flintstones cartoons? Very relatable, very easy to understand. All right, go further than that. What do you mean? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell a little bit of my personal history. My grandmother had schizophrenia, and I never met her. She died before I was born. But I was always interested in who she was, what her experience was like, what it meant to lose your mind, and what I'm that sorry, looks did like. Did you write the BoJack episode about, the, the, what was it, Arrow? Time's Arrow. Did you write that? that? Yeah. That is a beautiful episode, and now it makes, like, a lot of sense. Right, exactly, yeah. Oh, my God. So, sorry. Um, yes. Uh, and then I started worrying about my own mental health and what it would mean to lose my mind, would I lose my sense of self, who I was, and then around age 33 I did. I had a nervous breakdown. What I, is that like? Um, you don't know who you are or what's happening, you, don't, you feel out of control, you want to feel back in control, um, you want to be lifted of this heavy weight, this heavy burden you're carrying around. I've been, I've not, not personally, but I've experienced people with panic attacks. Is it beyond, is it like a panic attack times a thousand or is it not even in the same league as a panic attack? Um, I think a panic attack is like a very intense experience and this can be, depending on whether it's depression or anxiety, it can kind of be more like ongoing. Uh, but looked for solutions, uh, did psychotherapy, which was helpful, um, looked at other kind of Western medicines, thinking maybe, maybe I have allergies, maybe I can solve this with like medicine or something. But then ultimately found alternative healing, found meditation, found yoga, found healing from different cultures, uh, different indigenous cultures, and then started looking at the way they approach mental health and mental well-being, and they have a much more fluid idea of what it is. So in fact, in many different shamanistic cultures, people who hear voices or have visions or have like experiences that pierce through the curtain of reality, they're the ones who are um, seers or can relate messages or can hear guides from other planes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started thinking, well, what if this is actually a gift? Like, what if mental illness is a way to help us get in touch with something larger than ourselves? It is something that's guiding us or helping us or opening us up. Um, maybe in, in ways we don't want to be or, or are being forced to. Uh, and maybe it's our ancestors guiding us or helping us. So just kind of uh, reapproaching, thinking about how we experience our mental well-being, thinking about how we experience reality, how as a society we come together and decide what is normal or real or acceptable, but maybe that's much broader than we tell ourselves or each other. How the fuck do you pitch that? <laughs> I just can't imagine being the person on the other side of the desk going, uh-huh. I'm gonna go call my mother now. Like, it's just so, it's so incredibly deep. Like, what does, did it help coming from Bojack to be like, look, I got some experience here. I think we could do some next level shit over here. I mean, definitely. I mean, Raphael reached out to me when we were working on Bojack and said, like, let's develop something together. Um, season one, I did Downer Ending, which was episode 11, which is when Bojack kind of has this experience on a drug trip where he sees this alternate reality that he could have lived or experienced if he had made different choices. So off of that, we started talking about what would the show look like if we created something together? And then we talked about these sort of philosophical ideas and our own personal experiences. And then that helped to go in and say, this kind of episode, but a whole show, and yeah, starting there. Every episode's like yeah. this. <laughs> right. I would imagine, uh, while being creative and fun, and, and it's dramedy, so it's not all fun and stuff, but it's also therapeutic? Like, because the stuff I've made has helped me in life, and I imagine if you're working on something that's akin to or in the na nature of a, 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 something that you went through, is it therapeutic? Definitely. I think often in ways that uh, you wouldn't want to do the work. You know, oftentimes people are saying, like, we'll go deeper with that. What does that mean? Or what is this thematically pointing to? Or what's the deeper truth here? Um, so it's always a challenge, and it always means going deeper and trying to uncover layers of myself and to study myself and to stay kind of... Uh, fresh in my thinking always. This Up here we do a lot of light interviews. This shit's so heavy, I'm shocked the boat hasn't <laughs> sank at this point, man. But it's good, I, I dig it. Now, in order to 
accomplish this in order to pull this off, was there a discussion like, oh, let's do a live action? Or was it always like, let's let's rotoscope? It looks like, to me, Scanner Darkly, the Richard Linklater thing. Exactly. One of our producers, Tommy Pilata, was oh. a producer yeah, on well, Scanner Darkly sense, and, right? and Waking Life, and he's fantastic. Um, and we first approached this artist named Hisko Hulsing. He's an animator. He's a director. And we saw a um, montage of Heck, the Kurt Cobain story yeah, yeah, that yeah, Brett yeah. Morgan did. That's right. And there were pieces yeah. in there. And so he had pieces of animation in there, and we thought this is the kind of animation we want to, because it's very realistic, it's very grounded, and what we're doing is playing with the flexibility of reality. So we want to bring you into a world that feels very real, and, um, but also uh, allows for movement, mm. allows for um, stretchiness. So we approached Tisco and he read the scripts, and we met, and we decided to do this together, and he actually suggested rotoscoping, because he had done work with Tommy right. Pilata, and uh, to get the, all those sort of micro-expressions and make it to feel very, very real, as real as possible. So that's how we decided to do that process. Now, uh, Rosa, you, they, they won't let you be you in anything. <laughs> Anytime you go to act, they're like, we're gonna cover you in cartoons. Oh, yeah. Um, one, whether it be this or Alita. One lady was like, yeah. One lady was like, will the real Rosa Salazar please stand up? Yes, yeah. And I was like, are you qu quoting Slim Shady? <laughs> uh, but it's true. I mean, I have a lot of fun with that because I feel like I can really be my most rawest, most organic self when I can fully transform into a character without the, you know, uh, my physical form. I can leave that behind and uh, I, can, I can truly give birth to someone completely different. So um, it's not like I planned it, you know, right. but when this came along, I was like, wow, I am really making a, making a trend here for myself. You're just so, you're very like naturally expressive and whatnot, and it's I'm like she needs no right help now. whatsoever. Yeah. And then they put animation on you, and it, it's, it's, which is great, but at the same time, I'm like, she's fantastic. Oh, um, thank you. What, how does, I, I watched in, in the trailer, Simple things like you sitting in the car and then the car going away. What is the directorial process in that? Do they explain like it's what's <laughs> going to happen is you're in a car and then we're going to pull the car away? Well, there's there's a script that is beautifully written, um, and um, but what I didn't know is that everything. I actually am crying right now. When you whenever she talks about this story, I, it just it hits me really hard. So that's why the sunglasses. Um, we shot everything in like a 12 by 12 space. It's mm -hmm. almost like, I don't know if you've seen Dogville, the Lars von Trier mm -hmm. film, yeah. where everything is taped out on the floor. Um, this is Dogville animated. No, <laughs> Way to You're sell in for it. a treat. I'm um, sure all the kids at Comic-Con are like, Dogville, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything is done in a small building in Hollywood. And uh, and it's it's like black box theater all day. So the car scene that you're talking about, we have a car seat, we have a C-stand with a wheel on it, and we have a few cameras positioned around me, and they're like, go. <laughs> and that, and it's, and, and it, there it you go. It almost sounds more fun than normal movie and TV making yeah. because it's it's so make pretend. There's nothing yes. around you to intrude. It's just, it takes it to its pure, purest form. Like, yes. I'm fake driving a car. Yes, it's wonderful for that reason. It's also the most, I mean, you mentioned Alita. Everyone's like, how hard was that? I'm like, well, it was such a big endeavor that you have about two hours between setups to, you know, putz around or read your script or, you know, relax. But with this, you we shot 23 pages in a day. You normally only shoot about an eighth of a page in a day. <laughs> well, wait a second. 23 That's, pages. Maybe I'm one of them big expensive movies. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah five, <laughs> five, six pages on is my pretty movies. intense. Yes, on the, when you're <laughs> battling <laughs> angels and whatnot. When you're but, battling angels, you shoot an uh, eighth of a page. But for this, I mean, you just... 23 you, is, that's, in, that's it's incredible. It's insane. It's that's like, Robert Rodriguez type setups and numbers. insane, and you are shooting on a black box you know, stage. So they're like, okay, we did the car stuff, wheel in the door, wheel in the bed, wheel in the nightstand, bedtime scene. And you're like, oh, okay, I never sat in my cast chair once. I never had time to like, you know, uh, putz around. And I just, and I loved it for that reason because it's, I have so much energy. I really want to go, go, go. I want to be used. And I remember saying to my agent, I'm like, I just want to do something where I'm, I'm being used, you know, I, I'm to the fullest potential. I want to put it all in there. And I really got what I asked for. <laughs> right. And after that first week, I fell ill. Yeah. And um, because I had never expended so much emotion, so much energy. 
And, um, and, You're used and the to being hired to act, but they literally yeah. hired you to act every second of every the day. Every second. They really got their money's worth <laughs> yes. out of me. And it was, and, and like you said, it's therapeutic, it's cathartic. So I was, you know, going through so many emotions a day, you know, um, and it was, it was really a spiritual, it was a spiritual thing for me. The entire shooting of the show was... Uh, such a spiritual undertaking for me, and I am crying right now. Oh and Rose did such a beautiful job. I mean, her performance is incredible. Like you said, she just pierces through everything she does. That it feels you feel the rawness and the vulnerability and all the emotion, and it's and, and the, the work you did was incredible, and they continue to do. And thank you. Thank you for writing such a beautiful script. <laughs> Kevin! What a love fest. <laughs> I, we've certainly car uh, covered the drama part of it, but there's yeah. an a D part of it as well, so that's humorous. Right. Let's, we're, let's we're, sell where that, do, Where too. do the jokes come in? Yeah, they're yeah, jokes. Yeah, they're no. absolute jokes. Well, Speaking I of, think what's great about Rosa is that she's so versatile, so she can be hilarious, and then she can be, like, crying from a real emotional place that feels like she's expressing something from her own life. I'm it feels crazy. Surreal. <laughs> uh, but the range is, is amazing, and she can do all of it, um, which makes the show work. Hmm. All right, so we got this hat here, man, on the IMD boat. We put questions in it. We ask you to take a question out, okay. and you guys both answer that question. Okay. Oh. What's your secret superpower? <laughs> ah. Uh-oh. Uh, what's your secret superpower? Um, I am a really great sleeper. I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can, I can make even a very depressing situation very funny, <laughs> and uh, I don't work know. through the tears. We just saw. It. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if everyone appreciates that. I have uh, my oh, my whole family over there, so uh, and they're all like <laughs> gallows humor. I think they call it. Hey, you hired me, so it is a power. It is. Yeah. You made the show work with your superpower. Thank you. Yeah. You made beautiful. the show work with your superpower. Oh, thank you. I think your superpower is writing. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah, you. Yeah, you went for sleeping, which yeah. you I didn't write. She wrote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, give it up for the ladies from Undone, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Kevin. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Kevin. Stick around for more IMDb at San Diego Comic-Con 2019 later on.